it. I'll do it in just a sec. I'll do it next. Based on the uh, original Hasselblad design, but obviously a film, not a film camera in any sense, digital camera. Um, film Productions is 1950 odd. This is a, I forget, it's 2000, 2005 model, I think this is 2006. But um, fantastic nonetheless. A couple of nice lenses, nice macro lens, very good. Lens, 2000 pound lens. And uh, so what I, this is our, I suppose our library, isn't it? Okay. Um, it's right, it's yeah, it's closest. Yeah. And then there's, there's some other shots here to try and process as yeah. the day goes on. But this is the one he wants today. We did something quite recently for the beatification of Cardinal Newman with the London Oratory. And that was, uh, I think it was about, I think it was a 70 foot banner, I think it was, a 70 foot banner that hung from, uh, hung from the riot tree. Film of it would be this over here, this baby. It's a 10 by 8 inch camera, plate camera. So, and that, that is about 1970 on, I think that one. Um, plate size being 10 by 8 inches, that would be the film size, about there. So that would be the modern, <laughs> that's the modern day equivalent of what this would, this, we still use this though, having said that. Um, and this produces enlargements of fantastic quality. Obviously you'd have to scan the film to, to produce a print. However, you can scan these things, a thousand gigabytes isn't a problem. Which is a five by four standard which is this, this part of the camera. And at the moment there's a 480 millimeter lens on there, which um, is quite long for a 10 by eight inch um, plate. I think the standard for a 10 8 is supposed to be 300 millimeter lens. We've got the 480 on there for doing um, exceptionally nice work. It's a lovely lens. It's rod and stock, so it's uh, sharp corner to corner. And uh, we find that that's very, very nice lens for doing most most things that we do on the 10.8. Um, obviously, we have different lenses for different different things, but that particular one is, is very nice. The film has much more saturation and, and richness as opposed to the sort of the noise you get from uh, digital files. Um, and it has a, a heck of a range as well on, on the contrast from from white, absolute white to black, it has a terrific range. Um, more so than people would, would allow or, or give it credit for. So yeah, I like working with that a lot. But unfortunately, it's one of those things that's getting harder to keep going. Well, basically, you know, I got into photography because as a hobby, it was a hobby initially, um, and uh, I enjoyed the concept of photography and what it could do. Um, I wanted to learn more, but also having a, an art background, I enjoy art. And this particular job as a fine art photographer, photography, photography of works of art came about, which, which I got into and was fascinated instantly by things like this and the works of art that we'd get to work with. Um, and it just captured me straight away. So, you know, I, I just sort of went through, started as an assistant technician and, and worked my way up. So this all post year 2000, but in actual fact, we've got negatives going back to Oh, 19, about 1930, with the ledgers backing that up, going back to 1919 when the company began, in 1919. Um, still the old ones up there, but uh, we've got large format negatives in here, colour black and white, and um, uh, six by seven format as well. People, places, things, it's all in there. Here we go, 1922. This is a ledger from 1922 where the, thing, the item 
to have been photographed, such as the Royal Academy, and who commissioned it, and how, how many prints and etc. were commissioned. 1856, for example. But they are March 1922. Here's a turn like transparency for you, that's what they look like. Obviously from that large camera there, that's the sort of thing. Um, we produced, you can see that beautiful sumptuousness that you don't get necessarily. Different, uh, different finish, but the print looks flat, the transparency is alive. Here you go, cup of tea for the workers. <laughs> Coffee for that one. So what, what we based it here is uh, photographed a, a work of a very big work of art on an exhibition stand at the, at the Masterpiece Fair which is just finished in um, Royal Hospital and that was the original file believe it or not which you can see it's there's no way you're going to move that lump of marble there uh, bear in mind it's on a stand as well so what what Sharon did here is, obviously I patched it up as best I could with bits of, of this particular colour that they like and on the, around the plume. And then Sharon has basically cleaned that up somewhat so it's still on there rather than being put onto a uh, Yeah, just use that and just blended that in for me. Mm. And this. Yeah, th this one was huge. So that, that background was 12 foot wide. In, in, a, in a very large warehouse, but, but didn't fit on. So, yeah, Sharon, basically you extended that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And we get a lot, we get a lot of that, but that's a case in point where once it's down, you can't lift, you can put it together, you can't lift it. The uh, installation shot. So that was, that was about three shots to get that wall. And, and, the, and the screen, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. That, and the screen, to get it all lined up, yeah. Together. And then he put it together, stitched, stitched it together. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Why? Because the lens wasn't wide enough. Or and yeah. And so it this is. Added. I think it was. Is this added? No, it's the back wall. No, no it's not added. Added. Yeah. I think it was. It, the difference was the screen. But we put the screen in because I think I had to do two exposures: I one for the did. screen yes, and exactly. one for that. Because that. To get everything it, yeah, uh, I think that's a funny story. And um, having having the royal warrant. Uh, we get access to some very privileged uh, spaces that we, you know, the general public would normally get. And a few years back I was, I was asked to accompany an artist, a very well known artist, who was commissioned to paint the Duke of Edinburgh. And basically he was, he was given three uh, hour sittings to paint, which was anywhere near enough for an artist, so they need to do sort of 30 hours. And he was given three hours and he said to me, the only way I'm going to do this is if I get photographs of the Duke of Edinburgh. I'll give up one of my my sessions for me to photograph. Fine, no problem at all. Sounds great. Opportunity of a lifetime. I'll do it. So went along on the the last uh, session that he had. Met the Duke of Edinburgh and um, took a load of shots. The artist was with me, saying, oh, "I want a shot there and a shot there," and he did all these shots in to build up a sort of model of his face. And the Duke the Duke went and he went to the State of New Parliament shortly after that and we were asked to leave the palace and the artist um, were about to leave so he had to spray his paint and fix it and he was worried that he'd go out and it's still wet and of course we're in Buckingham Palace and well you know I don't want to spray aerosol in here it's going to stink so he um, said I think I'll just go out and get him to open the window so he goes to the window and opened it and um, sprayed outside and then it came back in again. And then about five minutes later, there's a knock at the door, special services come in. And they go, I'm sorry, sir, did you just open the window? And he said, um, yeah. he said, do you know which window that is? And we were in the room next to the Royal Balcony. <laughs> we had no idea. So of course, the window had opened, all these people gone, oh, and started taking photos of this thing. And you saw a hand come out. Painting of Duke of Edinburgh and spray and go back in again. I mean, brilliant, really good. And we're asking you, and they basically keep it up. <coughs> but it's, um, it's the royals and the ones that the royal family, as lovely as they are, there's always a story to come with. That, that was, that was a priceless bit of time that was going to Leave the premises.